Hey guys, so in some of the last videos we've talked about air inlet density and how we can predict power based on what density is and how much fuel we can mix with that to make power. Um, so one of the first videos I did in that little series I guess you could say is um, I showed you that I installed a new um, intake air temperature sensor. So if you have a Sniper EFI Super Sniper or Sniper X-Flow, I have the Sniper X-Flow 8 injector, um, you have the ability to use three inputs, three 0 to 5 volt inputs. And I use mine for fuel pressure, oil pressure, and now in, intake air temperature. So typically these sensors work off of a resistance scale. And that's not something the sniper can deal with. So previously, that's just not been an option unless you put your own bridge circuit together. Um, not a lot of people know how to build a bridge circuit and how to convert the calibration scale from an ohm to a 0 to 5 volt signal. So an easy way, and the way I went, is fast. Um, here, I'll swap. Fast has a temperature sensor converter kit, part number 307037, comes with the box and the sensor. So the sensor is what you saw in that video installed in the truck. And basically what they have here is a bridge circuit. And the bridge circuit has been calibrated for the sensor that they provide, which is a basic sensor, so it'll be easy to replace if it fails. Um, the problem with these is heat soak. Um, so there's a couple things you're going to want to do to deal with that. Um, one thing, once we install the sensor and we wire it into the sniper, we have to go into the tuning software and we have to set up that sensor and set the calibration scale. Um, but what we also want to do is obviously we want that sensor to automatically save us if we make mistakes in our tuning. So, well not really make mistakes in our tuning, but in case we don't think about inlet air temperature and we're just driving around in a hot summer day, we want the sensor to help protect our engine. Um, and so in these old school setups, that's just not really much been available. So I'm gonna show you how to install the sensor, how to do the tune, well, not install the sensor, you saw it, you just drill a hole and uh, screw it in, uh, get you an MPT uh, plug uh, tap and tap it in. Um, but you wire it in to your available inputs, and if you just look at your manual, it'll show you which 10, I think it's a 10 pin harness, but which harness has the three inputs available. And even on the side of the wire, it'll say input one, input two, input three. So it's it's pretty easy um, which which wire you're gonna do and the kit here comes with the instructions for the wiring so very basic switch hot signal return the white wire black for ground and then sensor positive and sensor negative so this is really simple um, even gives you the instructions here um, that's it and basically you're just going to wire it in and if you need help with this just send me a comment but it it's pretty straightforward so if you're not using one of the fast um, fuel air spark whatever they stand for um, systems other applications so the output of the sensor converter is linear from 0 to 300 degrees 0 being 0 degrees Fahrenheit and 5 volts being 300 degrees Fahrenheit 60 degrees being 1 volt so what we're gonna do once we've installed everything this is old red's tune so we're going to go in here to first thing is going to go to custom and for me it's custom three um i've got 
fuel pressure, oil pressure, and custom three. So hopefully you can see this. All right. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to enable. It's going to be a custom five volt sensor. Okay. If you're if you're using the pressure transducers, they're obviously up here, but for what we're doing for intake air temperature, you're gonna have to go to custom five volt and you're gonna have to assign it an input. Just name it whatever you want. Blower intake air temperature is all I did. Format one, leave it as that units is intake air temperature. So you can enable these high alarms and stuff if you want to. Um, it'll just change the window color in the sniper. This is not really all that important. You can have a safety setup. So if air temperature gets to whatever, you can cut the ignition or um, whatever you want it to do to help protect yourself. Um, I'm going to show you what I, I'm going to use for protecting myself. So here's where you do the calibration. So the instruction said zero here in 300 degree 300 degrees linear okay so and it also said once you set this linear scale just make sure it shows at 60 degrees you're at one volt okay that's all you have to do to set up the sensor all right so custom 5 volt name it you can en enable this stuff if you want you can use this if you want, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to use. Um, and then this is the important piece, calibration curve. It will not work unless you get this right. So obviously, once you get this set up, test it against a known temperature source. Um, once you plug it up to the car and you upload this tune um, that's been revised, and you should be good to go. Now... This is where you gotta be careful, but um, go up to toolbox, enable advanced tables. Okay, it'll give you a warning. These are your advanced tables. I already got that down here. So you have 1D tables and 2D tables. For this, you're just gonna go to a 1D table. Okay, you're gonna hit enable table, and you can do up to four of these. Table one, just hit enable table name it whatever you want intake air temperature compensations what i have it your table type is going to be a timing offset okay you've got all different kinds but it's going to be a timing offset and then x-axis is going to be blower intake air temperature that's my sensor that i did that's my custom three so whatever you name your custom three when you go in here it's going to give you all the sensors all the build all the different things you could use so you got to go to the one you named it so this is your custom um, name you put in there so <clears throat> I do enable so this is where you have to deal with the heat soak when you're sitting at idle the sensor is going to heat soak and it's artificial um, the inlet air temperature is going to be a slightly artificial because there's not enough airflow going past the sensor to give you an accurate temperature. So it's going to take on the temperature of the aluminum. So it's a little bit heat soaked, so it's a little artificial. So for me, I'm going to do advanced enable. This table will activate when the RPM is above 3500 RPM. And what that'll do, it'll give it enough RPM to where the sensor has cooled off and is more accurate. Now these sensors are notoriously delayed. Sorry if the camera's shaky. Um, I'm holding my cell phone up. My GoPro's dead and I've been too lazy to charge it. So, um, so at 3500 RPM, I'm going to enable it. So what that's going to do is help cool that sensor and then I should start having a pretty realistic number for inlet air temperature. Um, but what I was saying is these sensors are notorious for take being a little bit delayed in their reading. So it may be 170 degrees in the inlet, 
but it only read 160 because it's it's just a little bit behind um, the curb. So you have to compensate for that. Um, so what I've done here, and this is just me, but this is the way I have set my tune up, is I have tuned it to where inlet air temperature around 120 degrees and less, I'm going to leave the timing alone. I'm not touching it. I'm okay with 120 degrees. But once we go to above 130, I'm going to retard the timing half a degree for every 10 degrees hotter than 120 degrees all the way to 250. So I set up my range from 100 to 250. And if if I'm anywhere in here, it's going to retard the timing based on that. So greater than 3500 RPM, if inlet air temperature is above 120, it will retard the timing accordingly. Now, if you look at these blowers, a lot of the time these these small blow will be around 200 degrees at 10 pounds of boost. They add about 10 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees per pound of boost. We'll find out whenever I get my blower back. Um, it should actually get there at the blower shop tomorrow. So um, they'll have a they'll have it for a few weeks. And once I get it back, I'll install it, get everything buttoned up, and drive it down the road and get some baseline inlet air temperature. And I want to see what temperature actually is doing. Um, now the two-lobe rotor is going to be even hotter, which was what I didn't measure. But uh, the good news is I have some information. Someone else who has the same combination as me almost very identical same blower and he's using the two lobe so when he gets everything running he's going to give me his inlet air temperature and we'll be able to, it'll be comparable because we literally have like the same combo um so whenever he gives me that i'll be able to give you a before and after uh, what the high helix actually affords you um on blower speed versus inlet air temperature um, cause it's gonna be a blower speed derivative and not necessarily boost. Boost is a meaningless term, honestly. And, in this, and we've proved that over the last couple days, uh, depending on inlet air temperatures, what, what matters and blower speed is going to be affecting that temperature. So anyway, that's how you set up the sensor. Um, the instructions will come with a sensor wired up. Plug it into one of your inputs. Just choose one. It doesn't matter. Give it a custom name. And then go into the 1D advanced tables and set you up uh, some protection in case you're not paying attention and it's a hot summer day and you didn't adjust your ignition timing um, to deal with that. Like I, I, I don't let the sniper... I let the sniper do, <clears throat> I set up the base tune and I let it compensate, but if it's really hot outside and I had, the last time I drove it, it was cold outside and I hadn't adjust the base map, then that's going to hurt me. So this will protect me a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Questions and some comments. That's it.